Hi guys, I'm Admiral Pegasus and this is the Pegasus Show and on today's show we are going to be looking at the year in review 2023 for Star Trek Fleet Command because Happy New Year! Yes, we are now in 2024 and well, hopefully we're going to have a better year than we actually suffered last year. But before we get into the content, if you want to know when I go live or actually drop a video, please subscribe to the channel. So... 2023 was a bit of a mixed bag year, wasn't it? Didn't exactly end on a particularly good one in certain aspects, but in other aspects it did, but it also started off in some good aspects. Yeah, and, but anyway, but, um, so we were treated to a lot of good stuff. Yes, I have written a lot of stuff down. I actually had to go through everything. Um, to, so I can make sure I do this properly and we've had some bad experiences too okay just I do apologize like for the state of my eye I'm just starting to get over conjunctivitis and <laughs> so basically um the they introduced us to a lot of different stuff new things and yeah so what we're gonna have to start basically is we are going to have to start with the roadmap from 2022 and actually go through what was in that briefly and then compare it with what we actually got through the year. Now, as we go through this, we are not going to do a month by month blow. It's going to be an overall arc by overall arc. So like we had Voyager in 2023. That's a four month arc. It will be covered as that. Just another thing as well. I am not going to be covering primes or refits unless they deserve, <laughs> they deserve a special mention because it will take too long to go through everything. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to do this by basically features and content released in each arc and then officers. So, and then we're going to, talk about the big elephant in the, the the white elephant in the room on this one so let's jump to the roadmap for 2022 and actually just quickly go through stuff that they promised us okay so here we are in the roadmap 2023 so let's just quickly go through what was actually said in here so obviously they covered a little bit from the previous year let's not even mention starbase assaults but the first thing that they mentioned to us that we was going to be getting was fleet commanders this was going to be dropped in january it was and we'll talk about fleet commanders in a little in a little bit but basically supposed to basically give your um uh, your fleet some buffs in various different forms. Healing frequencies are also coming as well. So basically, you could send emojis to other everyone else in the system. Is by far the perfect system. But hey ho, this is the elephant. Yes, this is the elephant. Now, when I went through the roadmap for 2024, I forgot to compare it with this. Yes, we was promised game like performance. Boosting. Ugh. Yeah. They promised us this. And I'm I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but here we go. I mean, as you can see here, fix the lag. Did they actually do that? Ultimately, no, they didn't. But anyway, this is what they were pretty much saying. It's like we had the alike um the already things already released, the things that was in testing and coming up soon, things that was currently in development, and then things on the roadmap. Well, yeah. I, I, I don't know what you can actually say. And then we also had this one. Now, I've got to say, they started pretty good with this one. Yeah, they started pretty good with this one. And then they Fracked it up, didn't they? They well and truly fracked it up. But again, we'll cover that in later on in the video. So, and then what we got here, Right of Ascension. Now, yes, we do have something like that similar, but not quite just there yet in Wave Defense. Um, 
Yeah, I, I don't know if you could class the Wave Defense Section 31 stuff that was released here in December. Um, sorry, last month in December. So I, I am recording this on the 28th of, uh, 29th of, no, hang on. It's Saturday, it's the 30th, 30th of December, but it's being released on New Year's Day. So, um, yeah, I, so I don't know if you can consider it an Ascension, right Ascension thing, but hey-ho, it was certainly painful this year, certainly painful. Artifacts, again, they did release that into the game, and we'll cover that later on as well. Um, and then, obviously, IP, the big IP that we got this year was Voyager. So, that is is basically the 2023 roadmap. Now, <laughs> should we get into it? Yeah, let's get into it. Let's jump back into the game and start going through it. Okay, so here we go with the feature side of things. And like I said, we're just gonna basically cover things arc by arc. So the first arc that we received was a simulation parts one and two, and that was January and February. And basically what we was introduced to was if we just jump into my base, because that's ideally where I should have started this segment. But, aho, I didn't actually put where I'm starting each segment. But basically, we were given a new building which introduced us to our fleet commanders. Now, it's taken me a year, and most free to play players, if you have been doing your pulls daily, you should now have level 40 and be able to have two slots but now primarily we got these two i'll move myself up a little bit so we can see the um, locutus there basically we were given three particular officers this particular month which was kirk spock and locutus so basically what happened is we had the choice to choose from one of these two particular officers i went for spock because he was the mining one whereas kirk was more the pve one and obviously I eventually sourced him and I've been flitting between the two while I've been working my way to 40. Locutus was locked behind the paywall, which was understandable because he's a premium, but he's a PvP particular fleet commander. But yeah, we were given these and basically what it is, a pile of skills which help boost various different things. Now I can say that with things like the mining on this first one, the miner, which you can see I've got gas um, highlighted in a minute, it does make a valuable um it's some some good valuable you've got one over here which i really do actually like which is increasing your mining speed for um the devorfisha on concentrated latinum so that was a new one that i've recently opened by going to command center 40 um just as a quick fyi for f future reference as a free-to-play player once you do get to 40 i guarantee you that it's a 415 day hike to level 50 I've already done the math, you get 34 um, communicators um, a day, like I said, free to play. If you have gone and bought one of the other officers, I think, I believe it was seven of nine that was dropped later in this year. All these officers were dropped this year. Seven of nine does give you the ability to get the communicators faster, but again, uh, current, she is behind the paywall, but we'll discuss that briefly later on. Um, but you are looking to go to level 50, you're looking around about 415 days at 34 communicators per day. So just as an FYI, it is a grind, it is lengthy, but then again, a year to go from 0 to 40, that's not particularly too bad in my opinion. Could the sourcing be a bit better? Yes, it could. But Fleet Commanders have provided an overall benefit to the game, if you know how to use them, and if you remember to use them. but So that's basically it. Um, yeah, we have incursions coming as well. But that's being said, and then also in January was in introduced to Borg Solo Armadas. Woo! Yeah, fine, fair dues. There's not a lot you can say. Basically, it was a carbon copy of the Dominion ones. Three ships to do it, a 90 second timer, or goody, goody, goody. Um, then on in February, as part of the assimilation art, we was introduced to the Talios. Yes, this lovely baby just here when she, here she comes. So we'll do that. We'll actually have a good look at her. And we were obviously introduced to this, and with this came 
um, the new Borg probe systems, level 36 and above. Um, the alterations to the um, Borg refinery, because that vastly improved. Um, and expansion cubes, um, research, and obviously the expansion cube as well came in as well, offering various different um, different changes. And uh, sorry, different different rewards in so in sourcing um, three particular officers, which we got in February as well. If we just jump quickly into the refinery, I just realised I've not done my tea time pull yet. So Borg refine here we go, Borg Tech. <coughs> This was completely changed. Now, there are certain aspects that were kept from the old um, Borg, um, Borg refinery. So, like, we've got the Vidar Tier 9 Borg Solo Armada Directives. This was something that was dropped in before the Talios was released. And then, obviously, you've got the Talios version as well. And you can take a look at the stark difference in um, prices. Um, this one is just 28, uh, 29000 for 100 it is based on the tier of your um, Vidar, your, stand, your original Vidar. So there's that one. And then you've got this one here where you're getting more directives, but it's infinitely more expensive. As you can see, it's not even double, but it's over double the price. So yeah, you have to make up your own mind whether or not this is actually worth pulling. But again, we're not here to debate that particular thing. We're here to review the actual year. And Latinum Antique Refinery has become very much redundant in this time. Why it's still here, I really don't know. But then again, you've still got players who probably got a load of the um, tokens that they're actually trying to go through at the minute. So all these little things here that you get from the little bugs flying around the original systems. So now obviously if you do get them, they're not bad, you get a few little resource tokens, but the lucrative uh, transwarp cells, the epic latinum cells are literally redundant now given the fact that we have the uh, feature, they were there originally for getting bigger amounts of raw latinum. Uh, Credits have also massively improved as well as well as the reputation as well. If you've got the prime as well, you're also going to get a boost on there. Now, this is the refinery that came with the expansion cube side of things, which when the expansion cubes was also dropped in February. I've yet to pull a chess. I have yet to pull a chess off this because I don't do the expansion cubes. To be perfectly honest, the best way to actually source is that I found is to... <coughs> Excuse me is to lead the expansion cubes is to lead them so now there is a way there is a quick way of doing it i will um drop another video not this time round probably given the fact it's new year and yeah um still got stuff to do in real life um but i will do a review on the update that was done to the return of the mega cube event which was done in, for january because that was actually nice of scopely to actually revamp that one to include the talios include some pvp but as well i'll in, in there you've also got for doing expansion cubes so that could be like the best time for you to do them uh, get where you lies and to be honest it's not particularly bad you got some directives you got the um, shards for at least two of the officers yay and then at the end there, you've got a loot boost as well. But again, it's all under RNG, everything in this chest. Um, now, as well, with the Borg Solar Marders as well, if we scroll back to the beginning, we've got the chest here for the um, for get when you actually complete the Solar Marders. And again, they're office, offering officers. And they're also offering a boost to the Fleet Commander stuff as well so you're getting some um rare credits you're getting some um xp you're going to get some rididium as well and then obviously with this being the epic chest you're going to get some rares epics and things like that and obviously the new officers in here as well so that was pretty good um so the final thing on the feature side of thing that was introduced in february was um, the diplomacy markers, if we can just get the game to catch up. So if we go into Alliance, and what you will need to find here is you click on the Spock's um, <laughs> symbol and you, 
as you can see across the top there, you've got a number of different um, diplomacy markers. Now, I believe there is a chat because I have shared it about the best way to deal with this. But again, it comes down to your individual server, how you employ all these different things. So it is a great way, but the problem is it does it is kind of convoluted and it does kind of um, really make you think. Well, okay, what's this? What um, what does this mean? What does that mean? Whereas between ally, neutral, enemy was a hell of a lot easier. The, the your friends, you don't touch them. The neutral, yeah, you do it. The your enemy, you go kick their fucking ass. But yeah, it was it. To be honest, it is a good addition. But yeah. <coughs> now, I will throw this in there. And unfortunately, I don't have a screenshot to actually close this. But I'm sure some of you will remember. In February, as part of the Assimilation Part 2 Act, we had an event as a mission which required you to mine 3 million Trotanium. 3 million. Now, that's nothing because the G5 players had the 5 million to do. I've still got that to come. But I did do a video on that one. And in fact, to be honest, that is my most viewed video. <laughs> Two and a half thousand views on that particular video. So keep watching it and find out and watch the laugh on that one. But it did take you several days just to actually complete. It, it was a ball ache. But it's like, should you actually do it or not? It was down to you. But again, yeah. So that rounds up assimilation parts one and two. I, I'll... Go through the officers. Um, in fact, I tell you what, let's throw the officers in now. <clears throat> so, if we jump into officers and then we organize them into group, and then we'll have all the officers set up. So, the first batch then is was a pile of Borg officers, and the most notable one we got was right here above my head, as I've called him up, was Hugh. He was a fantastic addition to the game, bar none. He is a pure PvE officer below deck that increases your chance of a critical. It gives you a chance to increase your critical chance for two rounds and it stacks. And the more weapons you fire in that particular round, the better your chances. You're the better your chances. He is absolutely fantastic. Yes, he can be sourced by the Borg Solo Marders by completing the epics and pulling that chest. The sourcing is not particularly um, grand. I think the highest number of shards you can pull at any one time is five, and you've got to wait four days for it to cool down. But it's actually it is a fantastic officer. And if there's anyone, if there was an officer that came up in the event store. And he, if, if he was there, he would be the officer I would direct you to straight away. Now, obviously, his officer's ability is not something that where you'd really shove him on the bridge. You could use him for a speed, obviously, if you really, really wanted to. But a 7% increase at tier 2, yeah, okay. Let's not. Let's stick with the original speed crew that we've got. Include the most recent officer dropped in over impulse speed is actually far more beneficial for you. So, but this was definitely a fantastic PvE. He sits on below deck of my PvE ship all the time. He barely, he's, he's off at the minute. He's having a break. He's regenerating at the minute. Because obviously I'm doing solo armadas with that particular dock. So, but yeah, he's a fantastic officer. Now the next one was um, Galena. Again, he's going to be another great officer, especially as he gets tiered up. He is a rare, and where are you, buddy? There he is. Mine's already tier four. He's not far from going to tier five. Um, increasing faction reputation gains. Okay, yeah, fine. We've had a couple of officers recently as well this year dropped that do this as well. Um, but really, I don't put him on the bridge for that. He's more actually below deck, so what, what's theirs is ours. Increasing Acting Venom and Nanoprobe drop loot by 30%. This is at tier four. So, and it, when, he, when he is maxed out, he's going to be a 50% increase, which is fantastic. As you can see, I'm 79 of 225, so I'm not far off. I'm, I'm getting there slowly. But Borg Solomad is not something I've been concentrating on lately, but it is something that will be going back in um, 
in the new here in the new year. So you got those two particular officers. Then you had also a another set of below deck officers because these two are below deck officers but you also had another set of below deck officers starting with this particular officer that brought in a new state and for a change it's not an epic that actually um starts the state it's actually a rare and it's this particular version here um the assimilate ability is basically reducing the officer's ability of the opponent's ship by 25%. So uh, let me just think about this one. It's an isolated damage with some of the new officers that we've had this year who we're going to cover. Their officer's ability is a 20 is an isolated damage. You can knock 25% off that. So that's going to reduce the amount of isolated damage that they can do for you, but we'll discuss isolated later. Um, so things like that. So, is it a good ability? Tier 1, uh, yeah, okay, you probably are looking at Tier 3, 4 before it's actually of value. And then, obviously, the officer abilities were literally solo Borg, solo Amadas, and that will be for all three officers. Gosan was your other one. Again, he's an, another one, which is Borg, solo Amadas as officers, and PvP below deck. Um, then the final one was, which was actually a shock to us, this actually happened. The Boar Queen is a below deck officer. Why? We really don't know. Maybe being the Boar Queen is one of the, is the second most powerful character in Star Trek lore. Q's the powerfulest. The Boar Queen, the head of the most powerful race in in the Milky Way galaxy. Yeah. Why she wasn't actually given a captain's ability. An officer's ability. And a below deck ability. Is beyond me. But again she's Borg Solo Madders as an officer. And PvP below deck. Ideally you'd probably use all three below deck. But again you do need them at higher tier. Did they offer, offer a lot of. Um, to the game. In honesty. These three particular officers never did. And they were meh at best. So, and to be honest, I don't even use them. Literally, I don't even use them. So it's like absolutely nothing for me. So that rounds up the assimilation. Uh, next up, we've got um, the uh, Legacy Arc, parts one and two. So what we got with that was we got the missile, we got the new Xborg fraction, and there is a refit that I will give a special mention to because it is actually worth the mention. But let's go through the um, the missile first, and then the Borg fraction. So uh, the missile this was dropped in March, and then in April also we had the USS. Titan dropped as we give a new specialty ship. L less said about the Titan, the better. Basically, it's a Cerritos on steroids. It was a buff ship with two particular abilities of fortification and max fortification. It has its uses, it has its own loop, which basically requires you just to basically go out and send a buff. Now, the I will say the passive ability for the Titan, which is available, is the fact it can boost all your all your deployed ships in the same system. So if everything's together. So it's good joint territories. Good joint territories. And once you get it tiered up to tier 12. It can boost up to 12 of your alliance friends ships. Going in power order. From the most powerful to the weakest. If they're already buffed. It will choose the next one down. So on so on. So if there's like 12 of you with a, a tier 12 titan. That's that's 100, 144 players buffed right there. 144 players. That's the potential of it. <clears throat> but that that's as much as we're going to on the Titan from April. Missile. New way of upgrading it. So which And it's not ops locked. As you can see, 69 of uh, 99. I'm only an ops 47 player. And I'm pretty close to going level 70 with it. Level 70 is the top level. So, but what it is, is, is a combination of every single officer leveled, not tiered, 
leveled. So 430 levels gives you 30 points. It's one point per level. So this gives you an incentive to make sure that all your officers are leveled up. As you just saw, my um, some of my officers are not properly leveled. The um, the Borg ones we were just discussing, one of them wasn't leveled. It's only five instead of ten. There's another five points I could actually have if I leveled him up. But Officer XP is a bit of a pain in the ass to source. So I can source it in large amounts, but it's just a case of, yeah. I need about 30 million just for an epic office, a tier 5 epic. Yeah, 30 million. <laughs> so, uh, that's going from tier 4, uh, level uh, level 21 to 30, by the way. Um, so, but yeah, a new way of doing it gives you um, some bu buffs as well, some, some weapon damage buff, component uh, titanium cost efficiency, so that's good, reducing the cost of how much... It costs to upgrade a gun, your warp drive, your armor plate and shields, whatever. And officer stats as well increase and a boost to your research speed as well. Now, the one thing that was released, and this is partly the reason why I'm not going through primes, is weapon damage, hull health, shield health has really been given some welly via primes this year. Absolutely. It has been a pain in the ass this year. And I've just reminded myself, did I mention um, there's three officers September? Yeah, I've missed out October there. Yes, yeah, so it's all right. I, I, I just remembered I've missed out some officers from October. So, but don't worry about that. I know who they were. <coughs> I hope. But anyway, so that's... That's that. Let's jump over to the um, Xborg faction. Uh, so you go into factions, and this was a new faction dropped. Um, now, in all honesty, the um, this faction store itself is a great way to help you complete certain loops. I've used it to help me with the Stellar Loop. I now have not have enough particles <coughs> when I finally reach R and D forty nine to actually complete the Stellar Research, giving me an M score of one sixty over one sixty. At the minute, I currently stand at 150 over 160, so which means my Stellar is actually pretty damn good. I've now given completely up with a Stellar Loop. I, I, I occasionally do the Amadas if I remember to actually partake in the Apex event on a Thursday. So, because that was another update that we also had this year as well. That was a great boost. Really condensed it down into 24 hours and giving it a solid day instead of a three-day pit run. Join the session between acts. So in here you got um, some stuff towards the Mantis, the Botany Bay, some antimatter pods for the Bajoran faction, Meridian, so it's Isogen, and then some um, active as uh, inert nanoprobes as well. <coughs> Great source to boost yourself up when you are actually short, but they're going to cost you um, these, the new Xborg faction credits. To be perfectly honest, they are better spent here in the research tree. It's got its own research tree. Me, I sort of stopped it for a little bit while I build up the credits, but here is a fantastic boost on quite a lot. Because also what was dropped was the freebooters as well. The freebooters with some dailies for you to complete. I haven't got them to hand right now because they were completed and pulled. But basically, what this allowed you to do was like the Swarm, the FKs, the Romney and Klingon Federation. Basically, it allowed you to complete those dailies by killing the Freebooters. <clears throat> so instead of me going out killing, um, what was it, um, 65, was it? I think it was. No, hang on. It will probably be less than that. It was probably about th 20, 30 odd Swarms. Now, with the Swarm Sweep, I could do it in seven. Literally seven, because it was basically for one free booter equaled 10 swarms. So, obviously 65 points is the highest on the swarm for your dailies. So it literally cut that grind down. Now, it, all this came in in Ops 38, I will just say, the Xbox faction. The mess hall came in in Ops 15. So, there is. But again, FK has three, three, three free booters. There's a bit of a tongue twister. And I'm done. I've, I've done all three. 
and that that's the faction the cre uh, faction rep the credits or or got all the repair speed ups got in three kills instead of going out killing 25 bloody hostiles but bear in mind it's not just 25 you need to kill now if you work it out you could do it in 26 you could do it in 26 spread across three factions or three factions 13 in each faction so no that's not 26 is it? that's 39 39 instead of 75 well actually no, it'll be 50 in all honesty so, but there it is. It, it that's a massive drop. Fifty hostiles down to three. You can't beat it. And then obviously there are some things as well in here, in hand shields and hull health, and there is some uh, damage attrition as well. Um, one there for increasing um, um the, the active nanoprobes as well. Um, and they added some additionals throughout the year as well, like the enemies of Bajor, Prophet's favor and. Uh, chess collective as well so they added them in <coughs> made those loops a lot easier to complete as well so the to be perfectly honest the legacy arc was actually very valuable and it reduced the grind so much on a lot of stuff a lot there's no questions about it. This was a fantastic addition. So you had Hugh, who was a fantastic addition to the game. Really helped with that PvP killing. Especially when it comes to things like the acting hostiles and the freebooters. Hugh really does help. Another good thing as well released. I can't remember, where, remember when it was finally done this year. But it was done. The fact that Tal was able to be sourced free to play. Tier 1. That's it. Just a tier 1. So it's an a a full unlock via the officer flash pass in between the arcs. There was four four months of that. Yeah, so that was great this year. That also helps with free booters and the actions as well. Because Tal stripping that hull literally goes from like a hundred percent hull you've got to get through in a fight down to about twenty percent. But it does build over the number of rounds you go. So, absolutely fantastic additions. The only downside was the Titan. It was another specialty ship. It was absolutely a lackluster ship. And I really cannot be bothered to go into it. Now, the honourable refit mentioned here. So, if we go into the armoury, it's the only one that... Uh, there's another refit that I, I will um, call upon later. And the one we are looking for is where are you, you little bugger? Um, it is an epic, I will just say that. So not projectile, so it's ship skins. Uh, where are you? Here it is, the Fisher Glass. Now, I've not been able to this because there's been no free-to-play path announced. This is purely paywall, which is, yeah, it is a downer. But look at the ability over there. This is why it's going to get the honourable mention. It is a beautiful skin. I'm not going to deny it. I actually quite like that skin. It's better than the salvager skin. But what this does is basically gives you an increased mining rate for the fissure on raw latinum. So basically it means you do not need to run a devour and a devour fissure to do the two separate latinums. You could just use the one ship. So a, a base increase of 200,000%. Yeah, because obviously when the feature was released, it was absolutely, it still is, unless you got the skin, shit at mining raw or uh, raw latinum. But as well, as, as well, as well, it's also going to give you another refinery option as well, rewarding feature parts and latinum. This is another reason why I want this to increase my latinum pulls from 11th um, 11,000 to around about 16 and a half thousand per day so this so if you are prepared to spend money this skin is certainly worth going after especially if you are an avid miner get that extra latinum obviously the extra pass is also going to really work especially going through the g5 area my fish is at tier 9 it's stuck until i get to ops 51 but that's fine <coughs> because between now and me getting to 51, I can build up all the parts that I want. But also, those increased parts as well, I'm converting them at the minute to G4 Battleship and Survey to help 
the ships that I need to do in amongst those particular classes. So this is a definitely a special mention to this one. It's not the only one. There is one later in the video as well. And I'm sure by now you actually know what refit that is going to be. I'm not going to say, I'm not even going to hint what month it was dropped, what I consider it. But I'm sure you can figure it out now. Do not, do not put it in the comments, but just turn around and say, when I mentioned it, yeah, that's what I thought. So anyway, so that's the um, Legacy Arc. Messol, Xbox Faction Store, and the Glass Refit for the Fisher, all fantastic additions. The USS Titan, <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, so moving on to May, June, July, and August, Voyager. <coughs> this was the Voyager arc. Now, what we saw in this one is obviously in June, we saw Voyager coming with its own particular loop. Yay. Um, in May, we had the Delta Quadrant open up. We had the Artifact Gallery and we had Formation of Marders. Um, July, we had Q's Trials with Forbidden Take. And in August, we had Rare Formation of Marders. Um, the Station Research Tree G5 Expansion and some more Forbidden Tech added. So basically the two buildings that we got during the Voyager Arc are right there. The artifact with the number two over it and Q's Trials which is below it. Q's Trials is one that will give you access to Forbidden Technology which is going to provide buffs to your ships. Yeah, okay. They're actually not too bad. There is um, a particular one in there that's actually pretty good. Um... <coughs> but it wasn't dropped during the Voyager arc. Um, also, we had um, below deck presets as well. So, which basically meant that when you actually look at your signing officers, when it loads up, there we go. So, sign officers. Also, you click on the preset button and voila! Two slots I, I, on the side um now you would normally think that means just two officers no it does not no it does not any officers that you have below deck when you actually save these presets all the below deck officers will be saved at the same time as you can see i've got hugh and the doctor there i've got alonzo and the doctor there but the standard loadout for me, it, um, below deck on PVE, is Hugh, the Doctor, Grush, Galena. Now, Grush is just basically stat stacking. That's it. Because he's max. He's level 30. He's maxed out. He get, and because he's got that all round, all three stats, he's a stat stacker. That's pretty much the reason he's there. He's going to be removed off at some point off the precess because I need him for what range boosting off me miners for G5 but that's not yet that's when I get to G5 <clears throat> but I can select like this particular one here preset 3 this is my Borg um, probe grinding crew I found I've tried others even with 5 on the bridge I'm not getting anywhere near a full cargo bay and still hull left I'm hunting the level 48 probes this crew will gladly wipe the floor of an and I'm still walking back to my base with a 15% hull and a 3.81 million cargo. So, yeah. Others, yeah, find they increase my loot. But I don't get anywhere near a full cargo bay. This one gets me the full cargo bay. So, but at the end of the day, everyone's got their options on how they um, work. So we've got them. So that was a fantastic addition, actually making sure that they was in there to go with the bridge officers, which was released in 2022. Um, we was also introduced to new space, the Delta Quadrant, which was opened up in stages over the few months. Um, what else we got? The, and they also included the formation of Marders. Now, the, the uncommon ones were the first ones to actually be established. So we'll go through it in stages of what how it was released. So let's go out there. 
somebody's moving it. I've got a new neighbour. Someone from my alliance has come and joined me. But anyway, so it's all the way up here to the north of Federation Space. This is the Delta Quadrant. Um, it got some super highways added to it as well, so to help things. But it was all started off here. So, right, there you go. There's a Kelvin on Dock C. That section there, that was first released. Then we had the section up here released. Yeah, so then we had that. Then we had um, this section here where you got from Ilza all the way down to Elias. That was all released <coughs> in month three. And then in month four for the rare formation riders, that green section is where the formation, rare formation riders are. But this uh, circle just above the Kelvin, this is where the um, uncommon formation riders are located. Now, these worked into the artifact gallery, so this became an overall loop. So if we jump back in to the artifact gallery, and the artifact gallery is basically just a bunch of researches, multi-level researches, basically. That's all they are. You could work them towards your re research um, events and everything. So as you can see, I've got one sat here waiting to go. So if we just look at this one briefly, <coughs> This one is increasing isolated damage. So, because that will actually bring me nicely round to actually um, isolated damage. Because we also had that introduced in June. And basically what this was, was a new form of damage. Basically, massive power creep. If you actually did it right, eventually the isolated damage would end up being massively, massively powerful and over your actual amount of damage because basically what so put that down for a second while we do this so basically isolated damage takes your overall damage here and does that with it and then and then adds it on so you're still getting your standard damage but you're also getting all that added on to make it like that so basically you get to the point where you feel like you're carrying the freaking planet that's how much firepower you can actually kick out. It is basically, it does basically mean that you can punch up against bigger ships. If you have properly tiered officers and you go up against a ship that hasn't got the isolated defense because of my isolated defense came out as well. Yay. <coughs> but yeah. Now obviously it does work against hostiles. You can see this one just basically does it for the first three rounds. Always an absolute um, corker to have, especially going up against the freebooters and the actors for those first three rounds. Bat in. Oh, hello. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. Now, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm not going to go through the forbidden technology and everything, but we had all that. It was a nice addition to the game, I will say. <clears throat> but for me, it's remembering to do the Q's trials. It's not. There is a daily for it. But it's not part of my daily routine, to be perfectly honest with you. I, I don't do it. I, I very rarely do it. I should, but I don't. So that was Voyager. Obviously, Voyager ship came out as well. Nice little ship. Pretty good in PvE as well when you get it properly leveled. It also came out with a ton of research as well. And this research actually has... A lot of benefit as well we'll just quickly cover the research because obviously there was a loop I hope I put the um, the loop up for it but if we scroll across past the Defiant past the Cerritos past the Titan yeah Titan had a load of research to go with it too yeah I forgot to mention that a little bit but it just seems like all these new loops was just adding more and more research but this is Voyager so now this is a new prime that's recently come out we're not going to it is, it is a nice prime. It's not an honourable mention, though. It's not an honourable mention, but since it's showing up here, we'll do it. Basically, just adding artifact roles <coughs> and things like that. But again, it is behind a paywall. If you wanted artifacts, you've got this particular one here, adding bonus roles as well. So pretty much that, that prime is doing this. That's it. It's just adding an extra role in for you. So, But you've got ship maintenance. So you've got generally stuff towards your actual ship. Um, PvE combat for the um, Voyager itself and your other ships, um, some Amada stuff, scrapping speed, research speed, 
This is the super highways for the Delta Quadrant Space. As you can see, R and D fifty one before I can open up the next one anyway. So uh, what range? Um, this is the um, research that gave you the below deck slots uh, presets. Sorry, so absolutely worth going after. But again, it's its own loop and things like that. But actually, it is very worth it. It is very worth it in all honesty. So that's what was released during those particular months. So that's uh, now we're up to August. <coughs> Next up we go to September, which was Lower Decks 2 Part 1. And then October, which was Part 2. And um, what we were given in there, in fact we might as well stay in here because we'll just cover the this little bit first. Was the Monovine. We was given the Monovine as a new ship. So here's his research. I've only recently unlocked it. Um, as you can see, I'm following a particular slight path here. I'm not particularly bothered about this one because I'm not bothered about sending it up higher into higher systems just yet. Eventually, I will. But I'm looking at other things like this isolated damage and isolated defense um, against the uh, for, for the Monovine against the new Texas class ships, which we'll discuss in a minute. Um, increasing loot, increasing um, parts, increasing Amada um, loot. Um, material um, efficiency for your base and your research. Um, faction reputation as well. You And this particular section here, Enhanced Weapons and Tachyon Battle and the Three Darkers next to it. Are all PvP. I'm not focusing on them because I'm not an active PvP player. I'm not. Even though we're up against 135 in the um, incursion, so Loop's probably been hunted is going to be hunting me. We'll see. Or should we do? Or I know there is somebody off 135 as well that was going to meet up and have a coffee and things like that in game, of course. <laughs> um, <coughs> so we're going to get to do that, considering incursions was cancelled. At the beginning of December, <laughs> due to technical problems, but we'll discuss them shortly. But yeah, so this research tree does have a lot of value with it and is a great addition to the game. I can't dispute that one. The Texas class ship itself is also a uh, the Monovine, as you can see, the ship that's dead here is also a great addition to the game. It brought along with it a new refinery as well, which is absolutely fantastic. I will not dispute this. It is absolutely fantastic. Uh, Monovine, Monovine is, is behind me some, somewhere. There it is, right at the bottom. Here we go. It is absolutely fantastic. Now, the Monovine itself is an auto grinder. You can just send it out and leave it to auto grind, literally. You don't need to do anything else with it. And that's all I do. Just send it out, let it grind. Jobs are good, two or three runs a day, not a problem. And, and I just use standard PMC on it. That's it. And what it's going to do is going to give me something to pull on these first two chests. You can see I've got nine and a half hours at the time of recording. Um, here we've got... Um, chance to get some Queen's Favours by throwing in some extra loot. Yeah, okay then, fine, whatever. Because um, what you're going to do with those Queen's Favours is you're going to bring them over to these three chests, which is resource acquisition. Absolutely fantastic. I primarily use the Tritanium, building it up massively. But the one thing is as well, I dumped pretty much 3.1 trillion Tritanium, uh, sorry, 3.1 trillion steel into my Alliance contribution because we wanted to do a boost of an officer. So I dumped Tritanium, I dumped all my Dilithium, just the Raws, not the tokens, just the Raws. So yeah, 3.1 trillion steel, 46 billion Dilithium. Yeah, into my alliance. So I'm having to rebuild them, but this is a fantastic sourcing of resources. I, I can't complain. I spend on average one to one and a half billion tritanium per day in repairs for my Newton and various other ships, depending on how much grinding I get to do. Tritanium, absolutely nailed it, and I'm building it up. Um, I'm over 50 billion right now. Incursions will absolutely really want to raid my base. Absolutely. And then, of course, we've got this one here as well, which is material acquisition. Can't say it's ultimately the best, in all honesty, but again, a little trickle here, a little trickle there is nicely, but you will need to do a certain activity, which is another solo armada, 
which you will need your monovine for. Now to quickly cover the monovine, um, it's got two, three sets of hostiles in there. It's got the standard hostile, which effectively acts like a PvP ship. So if you attack it, you lose your base shield. So be very aware. The sentries, which actually chase you, these are your chasers. So this is what you're actively grinding. So you don't need to do anything. It's the sentries coming after you. And then you've got the supply ships. These are tough little buggers, but they yield a large amount of loot. But again, you attack one of them directly, you will lose your shield. So it's absolutely nice. Um, yeah, I'm actually loving the Monovine. It's one of the easiest loops in the game. Despite the fact that they brought Voyager in to add another loop. Now, Voyager loop is not something I do every single day, but it does have its uses as well. Um, especially with its own refinery. Um, so here's the text is the monovine space. It looks like a, a Texas hat. I actually say it looks a bit like a space fighter, but I mean, you've got the wings and you've got the cockpit in the middle. So, but apparently it's shaped like the, is it now? There's Stenson. Is it Stenson? Something like that. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but it's a Stenson hat, a cowboy's hat, basically. Um, which makes a lot of sense, really. So, I, I yeah, I, I really can't grumble with that. Um, <clears throat> also, what do we also get with like the lower decks? We got the Commander Legacy Reel for the five-year anniversary. We will cover the five-year anniversary after we've gone through what we got this year. Um, the Territory Season Pass as well came in. Uh, yeah, last year to reset at the end of Dece at the end of New Year. And I, I'm not quite sure when the first round is. I think it's around... Um, I think it's around Act 4, which will be around about the 9th of January. I think everything resets just before that, though. So, <clears throat> hopefully you watch out for that one. And here is the other special mention of a refit. Yes, it is the other special mention. I've got to throw this in. Yes, I'm sorry this video is going on quite long. But the, to be perfectly honest, there was a lot dropped this year. A lot. And... I know content creators like Rev will manage to knock this down into a 15 minute video at most, maybe 20 at, at, at the outside. But um, I don't know why I've gone in there because I don't want to be in there. I want it to be in the armory. It's just standard practice for me to go through the R&D. R &D. Um, but it's in ship skins and blah, 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 blah. no, because it's not there. It's not there. It's not there. And I'm sure you're all screaming at the screen about why are you gone there? You should be in at ah, in the forbidden technology. Yes, because it's the one piece of forbidden technology which actually is extremely useful. Extremely useful. And believe it or not, it was a cock up on Scopely's part, the fact that's made this absolutely awesome. So, yes, you know exactly what I'm on about. It is the Ferengi. Whip increasing your concentrated latinum <coughs> by 8,000% at the beginning. So basically, taking your mining time from half an hour down to 90 seconds to do a 232,500 node. We did do a video on this one, so I'm not going to cover too much into it, <coughs> but it is one of the best forbidden technologies that there actually is. I can't grumble, I can't complain. And it was dirt cheap at $50. It is locked behind a paywall. There is no free-to-play sourcing at the time of recording. Hopefully something in 2024 that they will actually release it for players to go after. It's got its own little refinery which really helps towards the rest of this. Which is fantastic. But ultimately, this, besides the Monovine, this was the best feature Crea accidentally created it wasn't accidentally created what the figures that they put on it was the accident the the whip ultimate was meant to come in but a fraction of the power it was but scopely said you know what right fair dues we'll give you this we'll we'll give you this this is fantastic here's the reason why so far they've not done a free to play source on it but then again a lot of the other free um Forbidden tech that they've dropped recently, they haven't dropped sourcing for neither. Um, 
Yes, I am aware that I've not covered the officers from Legacy or Voyager yet, so we'll, we'll cover them shortly. <coughs> G5 Marauders also came in as well in October. Brilliant, we've been screaming for them. However, they got off to a poor start, but kudos to Scopely on this one. Gotta say, when they actually do something good, within 24 hours, the leader chests that you get for leading the Armada, that was stupidly pathetically crap they were worse than the level they than the level 44 armadas they were worse than the g4 level 44 armadas that's how bad they were it made you have no incentive whatsoever to touch on the g5 armadas but the pet but the the logic around it was the loot payout was a hell of a lot better and yes it was but yet, for a lower level player that can reach those systems with Voyager, who actually wants to help their alliance, why is it, why should they be cut to a tiny little portion and a pathetic um, size uh, leader's chest? <clears throat> but Scopely saw our logic, and literally within twenty four hours of release, changed them. So which basically means the level fifty three, the level fifty four epics were only a couple of thousand in the leader chest epic credits higher than the level 51 epics which is fine that's fine because the bigger ones also took a big boost as well <laughs> so kudos to scopely on that one for actually doing it scopely have done some pretty good things this year but unfortunately a lot of stuff has really gone to the shit so finally then will be uh, november and december the make it so acts which we recently just add. So we've had new officers added to that. We had the G6 expansion, which is fa fantastic because it's now hidden behind a lock, so which basically means you do actually need to be 61 instead of like me. I can access most of G5 space because I've got the warp range. Yeah, just because I've got the warp range, I can access it. G4 was originally locked behind Ops 38 mission. 61 for G6, G5 sort of like the odd bod, but yeah. Um, new things coming out in G6 with the hazards and everything. The new ships designed to handle the hazards a little bit better than other ships. But it is a premium area. You literally have to spend a few hundred dollars a day just to stay, <laughs> just to survive in G6. So it's not something there where free-to-play players really want to go just yet. Just be happy to stay at the high end of the 30s into the low 40s. And plod your way through the game. Question, that's not a problem. Um, section 31, wave defense. Um, the facade building. The new battle simulator as well. And the new boss style events also came in in this month. Brilliant. I forgot to put the battle simulator into the gradient arc. But again, we've already discussed them. Great addition to the game. No questions asked. The section 31 uh, faction store with the dolomite particles. Which means you can eventually source a prime. Um, field training has also um, took some improvements as well this year with the additions of the Voyager Act, the Monovine, and also um, the Section 31. Is it Section? No. So the Battle Simulator. However, the Voyager um, one is a pain in the ass because you do need some certain things in it. So, yeah. The board cube was also dropped back in November. Let's quickly mention the board cube as well. Um, this was a... Sh now, this was a grow... Um, Update it as you grow ship. That's what it was. I mean, it, it's huge. It's huge. But, I mean, it's, it's a fantastic ship. Don't get me wrong. The biggest problem with it is this. The cutting beam. It's restricted on power. Yeah. And if you try and hit a hostile at a level higher than your ops level, so like me, 47, smacker, 49, you're going to lose 10% per level above you. So... 10% for 48, 10%, another 10% for 49, so that's 20% in total, yeah, off that damage. Now, the NDAs are pushing to try and have this tax removed because it's stupid. Um, we all agree, as you can see, it actually says there, when targeting a ship above your player level, the whole, da whole health damage, it deals, it decreases by 10% per level. It's stupid, it's ridiculous, and this is what really lets it down. But the one thing is to me, that cutting beam itself should be that powerful. You should be able to hit five levels above yourself. That's how powerful it should be. But sadly, I can't. 
you have to go to the specific hostiles. And as we proved in the last live stream I did, it, the, the charging rate, which I do agree with, it does need to be charged up because you, otherwise you would just go around blasting everything. But the charging rate is directly proportional to the whole health you attack. So how, how much charge you get, it depends on how, how much whole health you've got to get through of your hostile. PvP side of things, when you get to a certain tier with a ball cube, drops by half. Yeah, I, I, I don't like that idea. It should remain the same as the PvE. Because you're going up against players. I mean, it's like, I've got a 3.6 million blast. PvE is 1.8. Players I would probably go up against have got whole health in the millions. Hundreds of millions. Is that going to cut it? <laughs> Pun intended. No, it's not. Absolutely not. It's like a blunt knife. It's like it's like me getting a feather coming up and tickling it. Tickle, 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 tickle. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. So that's the only downside for see, I can see for this. It is a ball lake to upgrade because of the grinding, but you can basically use it in your normal grinding. The downside is you just cannot go after those high level hostiles with the cutting beam. No, you can't. So <clears throat> was it a great addition to the game? Yes, because the one thing is this will grow with you. As you can see, it says four star, but it's an 18 tier. That is the highest tier now for the G6 epic ships. And obviously being able to tear it up is limited to the um, rarity faction ship you have. So for me at the minute, I've got a level 46 rare, so I can go up to tier seven. Once I get a tier, um, a tier four and a tier eight, G4 Epic, I can go to tier 8 and tier 9 respectively. As you can see there, I need a tier 4 G4 Epic to actually go to tier 8. So, but given the fact that I'm still debating whether or not I'm going to get one of them, will depend on it, on anything. But, but you can skip ships. So if I don't want that Epic, I want to go straight for the G5 Uncommon, I can go straight to tier 10. I will be able to go straight to tier 10. So basically it means between now and me getting to Ops Shipyard 53 to build that Vorchar class attack cruiser, because it will be the Vorchar I'm going after, I've got to get enough um, memory alloy, which is this one, <coughs> shaped memory alloy, to actually upgrade it. Yeah, I have got to get enough. Now, at the minute I'm currently standing at 18 million. That's enough for me to complete all the parts, save the transwarp coil, so I can still make this pretty damn powerful if we quickly add up what I've got here. So um, I'm starting off at 16.7, going up to 22.4, so what's that? That's uh, seven. Um, oh, bloody hell, seven, 17. Uh, five, 5.7 million increase there. Uh, then we've got the shields, which is only about just under a 3 million. So that's what, uh, da, 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 8 million, 8 million we're at. And then the weapons, adding on not an awful lot. So what's that, about 200,000, so 2, 4, 6. So basically about an extra 9 million I can add to my ship. So that's going to take me up to around about 25 million um, board cube. Coupled with the fact I've still got two levels to do. <clears throat> so I'm probably looking, when it's maxed out tier 7, around about a 26 million ball cube. It is affected by generic research for boosting hull health, weapon damage and things like that. But not faction research. So just generic, not faction. But it is a, it is a pretty nifty little ship. I can't, I can't dispute. So I do enjoy playing around with it every now and again. It's just trying to work with that cutting beam at the minute which reminds me i still need to actually go do the grind for this today i haven't done that yet but that is the features so quickly to cover the officers then in the so if we just co cover that um go straight to this uh, so we was given two new fleet commanders in the form of seven of nine admiral jamie and F fleet commander sloan fleet commander sloan came from the section 31s in november fleet admiral jamie came in august with the voyager part four and April saw seven of nine drop in Legacy Part Two. Um, nice little buffs again, all behind paywalls. 
Yeah, so I couldn't tell you whether they add too much, but the if we actually look at the specific officers, we can actually do this properly by group now, because they're going to be right down there at the bottom. I'm not going to go straight into the officers, because we'll just look at them from this particular point. Now, there is a couple of officers I've got greyed out here. Um, Jack Ransom, he was an addition in September. Along with Andy Billups. I've got Andy Billups though. Um, where are you? Come on. I called him pull-ups. Um, you've got Shax there as well. He was an, another addition. Basically what Shax is doing is replacing um, Ortegas. Strike Team Ortegas for the battleship. Ransom is for the interceptor. And pull-ups himself. There he is at the very end there. Is for the morale. He's replacing Ikatika. Um, pull-ups uh, replaces um, Damar. Uh, giving you isolated damage below um, as an officer below deck. They can be put on one of the other classes. Um, so uh, let me uh, have a look at Billups. And then you'll get to follow the triangle that particular way. So if I put him on a battleship when it's got burning. So instead of an interceptor, I put him on the battleship. Because the interceptors can kill battleships. Yes, that's the way the triangle is working. So put him below deck and he's going to increase my isolated defense. So basically stopping shacks. That's what he's doing. He's basically stopping shacks. Because, um, yeah, put him on an intercept. He's giving 60% per round. So twenty, um, leaving just a 20% boost. That's not bad. Um, so that's, so you got that. So you got them um, added into the strike teams. Um Moving forward then to the pick officers, you've got Worf, who I've already got, is an interceptor one. Uh, Picard, who's an explorer, and Riker, who's a battleship. They basically incre um, increase the particular stats for those sh uh, states for those ships. So for Worf, he's going to be hull breach. Picard is morale. Riker is burning on those particular ships against their respected classes. So Worf will be against interceptors, Picard against explorers, Riker against battleships. But all three of them, the below decks, are increasing weapon damage by 500%. Is it 500? I think it was. So yeah. Then you got Pick Beverly at the end there next to Ransom. Uh, basically her the her ability is below deck primarily, which is organ dono, basically increasing um broken parts. So a nice little thing. Great one on freebooters. Great one to put on freebooters as an early crew before Tal. I can't remember what the actual loadout was. It's something that we ran. I'd have to watch the video again to remember the crew. So you've got them. Next up, you had the Voyager crew finally coming in. Uh, we started off with uh, the Doctor and Bolana Torres. Uh, Bolana Torres below deck is a hull is a hull breach officer. Uh, the Doctor below deck is a cargo. It, um, uh, sorry, a loot increase officer. He is actually pretty effective on the bridge, and so is Balana. No questions asked. Um, so yeah, there were the first two officers we got. Next up on in June, we got Janeway, Paris, and Harry Kim. Harry Kim is your morale burning officer below deck, and a faction loot, uh, faction reputation increase officer for the bridge. So he's great as part of your faction reputation grinding. Janeway is um, a full-blown captain and officer. Isolated damage below deck incre and um, increasing shield mitigation. Shield mitigation by 6% increasing with synergy as well. Tom Paris um, is more preferable below deck with, with increasing mitigation. So, yeah. Um, then you've got, next up you've got Chakotay and Tuvok. Chicote is your isolatic Amada damage. No, he's not. Sorry. He's your isolatic. Uh, no, not isolatic, for God's sake. He's your critical chance booster for Amadas as an officer and increasing number of shots as a captain. He's not a blow deck officer. He, to be honest, the sourcing for him this month, uh, the month that he was dropped in, which was July, was bloody that well. Even I got him to tier two as a free to play player. Yeah, tier two. But it was a lot of saving in materials and working on those SMSs. And then finally we got 7 of 9 and Neelix. Neelix was your burning officer below deck. But primarily you want him on the bridge. Because he actually helps Voyager's summoning ability. 
to, which is something I've not quickly uh, mentioned in this video. But Void, you can summon 8472 ships to basically get some extra loot. And Vo uh, basically, Neelix, the higher tier you've got him, basically reduces the cost of the summoning. The summoning starts at 500, minus 286, which basically means I can do one or two more summons per run. Seven of nine is a PvP officer below deck and an Amada officer as... Um, <coughs> Amad, Amad, uh, Amadas as an officer, if I remember correctly, let's just quickly double check her. Uh, Form 1 now commence, increasing critical damage by 80% against Amadas, so yeah. And then tertiary adjunct is isolated cascade against players. Now, isolated um, is something I've not actually done a video with because I'm still struggling to get my head around how it actually uh, all adds together. But it does, and it, and it works fantastically. So the final group then, I'll move myself over, is this particular lot right here, is the Enterprise E crew. We started off with Picard and Data, isolated damage below deck. Picard became our new loot, um, loot boosting officer, starting off at a standard 60%. With synergy, full synergy, he can go up to 140%, so pretty fantastic, I, if I do say, say so myself. Um... And then obviously in December we had uh, Riker and Delana, Delana, uh, Riker and Troy dropped to uh, give us a more synergy. Data is a fantastic um, uh, bridge officer with isolytic. Below deck he was a cargo increasing officer. So I'm not too familiar with Troy and Riker because obviously I've not got them. I've not delved deeply into them. Um, so and I think that's it. No, there is one other officer that did come as well this year where she's in the lower decks set. Oh, so two officers. Carl Freeman, brand spanking new PvP officer. Um, she was made way more powerful than she was intended. So again, yeah, problems with that one. Um, she was dropped in September. October saw um, the drop of Alonzo Freeman, which is your faction reputation increasing officer below deck. Officer ability is a sort of like a throwaway. Dr. Tahan at the end there. She was also dropped in October. Isolated, isolated defense officer. Again, I'm not quite sure how good that is, but I hope it is what it is. So they were the officers dropped this month. Now, overall, right, I, and that's the end of the script. That's the end of the script. It's not the end of the video because it's the end of the script. Overall, it's not that bad. This year has not been too bad for content and officers dropped. I will give them that. But we are going to get onto the sticky point for this year. We are going to get onto the sticky point. But what we're going to also quickly mention is the five year anniversary, November the 29th. So the five year anniversary. And was it a fantastic event? Absolutely not. It was shit. Five years dedicated to the game. And what do we get? A bunch of currencies to put us into a fucking raffle. Really? Is that the way Sco Rev Juice proved this with um, his Christmas video where he ranted. This is not Scopely as a whole. This is the Star Trek Fleet Command team at Scopely. Because other areas of Scopely did actually well for Christmas. They actually did actually give out some good stuff. Yeah, they didn't for us. They didn't for us. It was pathetic. The five year anniversary was pathetic. Now, hats off to Bex because she did a fantastic job with a lot of the videos and everything. Um, really pushing stuff. They did spend three months pushing this. They started in what? Um, September, pushing the five year stuff. But ultimately, it fell flat on its face. And the tokens that we got basically just dumped us into a raffle where the top two players actually got a new PC setup from Cherry Tree, which was looking like a Borg Cube. Fantastic PC, brilliant specs from what I understand, which is not very much. But yeah, it is what it is. But they did give us a way to actually sort out those um, tokens in the event store for this month by allowing us to get some more um, radiation towards that as well. Um, so that that it was nice that they actually did that. It's just a shame they didn't put them to better use 
actually at the anniversary. You know, like some keys to unlock the extra H dock or the extra buildings and research or the extra repair slots and things like that. You know, keys like that, which would have actually benefited players as a whole. That would have been nice. Better um, ship sourcing or something like that. There was a lot of stuff that's currently in the game right now. Scopely really could have gone out and said, you know what, five years, there you go. They could have done give me's, giveaways so easily, but they didn't. Now, the Commander's a Legacy Reel, <clears throat> a fantastic little thing that works with an outside company. I can't remember what it was called. Um, to be honest, I'm not particularly that bothered. But the Legacy Reel was fantastic. It gave you an idea of where you are. Apparently, it puts me down to, as was it a PvP player? No, I'm not. I couldn't even tell you half the flipping crews. I've just got a generic PvP crew, which is Carl Freeman. That's it. Other and strike teams when I finally unlock them in the sec section of 31 of the store. But yeah, it's <clears throat> yeah. But it was just a sign of problems. Now the beginning of the year, as I said, we started off fantastic with the loop. Um, grindings cut down in the form of Hugh coming in. We have the freebooters, fantastic. Towards the middle to the end of the year, with the introduction of Voyager, and um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me remind myself which ones. Uh, Voyager, Q's trials with forbidden technology, uh, formation of murders. Um, yeah, because Voyager sourcing, sourcing the Voyager officers. What a fucking joke is that? It is ridiculous the amount of grind they added in the second half of this, the year. They did fantastic at the beginning of the year and then fracked it all up at the end. And then let's get on to the white elephant. Stability. It wasn't too bad at the beginning of the year. It was, it was actually pretty good. It wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination. End of the year, it failed miserably. Now, I've got to admit, communication has been hit and miss this year as well. We've had a couple of good months. December was a fantastic month for communication. They were constantly on top of it. Yeah, other months they were just like, what? 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 Oh, can I have a drink of milk? That was literally it. That was it. It was pathetic. But this month, I will hats off to Scopely, um, Eco, and that. They did a fantastic job of keeping, on, keeping players apprised. But like I said, there were various things that Scopely could have done a lot better with. The five-year anniversary for starters. The lag improvements that they promised us. Yeah, the cut down in the number of grinds they promised us. They just simply added frack loads more. Borg Solo Amadas, Formation Amadas, Voyager Loop. Monovine, luckily, is, a, is an easy loop. It's an easy one to do. <coughs> so, can't gripe on that one. Free booters was a brilliant increase, a brilliant saver. Hughes, a brilliant saver. Giving us Tal was also a good one. It was also a good one. Um, what else? Uh, the blah, 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 blah. G5 faction armadas, like I said, there was a great addition. And finally, we've got something to do um, in the G5 space if you wanted to go and do that. But ultimately, ultimately. It's not been the best year for Scopely. It has not been the best year. And from what I understand at the minute, I mean, I, I, can't guarantee, I can't say that I know this for sure, but Rev has said that this game is no longer Scopely's flagship game. Monopoly Go is. And the reason <clears throat> is because spending has been reduced. Rev did a round table with a load of whales, big whales. And they were saying, we're cutting back on spending. We, I only play the game now for the community, not, not for what's in it. Because I'm constantly being kicked out. Even, even the VIP um, community managers have no sway anymore. They used to have a lot of sway at Scopely, now they have none. The VIPs might as well come and deal with Eco, the, with the rest of us. Because that's as much power as they've got. Scopely is literally not listening to the players. They're not. 
And the rest of this year has shown it by the fact that we constantly, in fact, it was happening at the end of last year. It's happening in the last six months of this year. Lag, crashes, stability, massive, massive, massive problem. I, I can't stress it enough. I literally can't stress it enough. But it is what it is. It's not perfect. We play. We all play the game because we love it. Now, I will just throw this out there as well as a quick caveat. Players who keep saying, if we stop spending in the game, Scopely might do something about it. No, that's bollocks. From my own perspective and my own knowledge of business and how things work, that is bollocks. Because Scopely Board of Directors, if they see that this game is no longer making vast sums of money, is not profitable, they will cut back on the staffing and they will cut back on everything in the game. And this game will go to the dogs. So at the end of the day, the players are in a catch-22 with this, sadly. We can keep pushing, we can keep asking. It's been promised in this year's roadmap for 2024 that... Um, we are going to see quality over quantity. Does that mean we're going to get new content every single month? Hopefully not touch wood. Hopefully not. Hopefully we're going to have a couple of months where they're just going to take a time out to do some background work on stability for the game. This is what we want. I think the players will, grad will accept <clears throat> a few hours of maintenance a little bit more regularly if we actually see improvements in stability in the game. Now, we obviously have got to feel really sorry for the iOS players because they've, they've suffered instability since day one, in all honesty, and Scopely have not actually got a handle on that one. So I've got to presume that's got to be Apple's end with their servers. Because Android's actually been all right. Google's been fine. For the most part. It's not perfect. Even PCs have had issues in the last few months. So that says it all. And PC's the easiest one to keep stable. Because it's just one platform. Mobiles, you've got various different handsets and Android levels and things like that. Different levels to deal with. PC's, you don't. It's as simple as a setup. That's it. Base level setup, that's how it works. Jobs are good and same with Max. Not so much for mobile phones. But there it is. But let me know how you think this year has gone. Has it been a good year? For, do, do you think ultimately we've had a good year? I don't. I grade this month. If I was to put a grade on it, right, I would say this month. The content and the officers have been fantastic. But you've got to put down communication, which has not been the best all year. We've had a couple of good months. That is it. Stability has been shocking. They promised to cut the grind and everything. They started off brilliantly, then they screwed it up to what from the final two-thirds of the year. They just added more. You, you can't turn around and say, that is good. You can't. Ultimately, this game is a mobile game. Our player is meant to spend five, six, seven, eight hours staring into the mobile phone. I don't. I put it down a lot. I've been doing solo murders all afternoon. I've cracked out 31 uncommon Dominion solo murders this afternoon. 31. Yeah. I ain't even looked how much loot I've got available and how long that... And I'll tell you what. Let's just throw it in for shits and giggles. Let's see how much I've actually got. <clears throat> so we need the Bajoran Faction Store, don't we? If we can just get it selected. Oh my god. This is another thing that I've got, is um, being able to touch systems and everything. So uncommon loot. <laughs> let's, let's have a look. 31 uncommon amadas. 89.3 million. And I've not even collected this chest, the chests yet. I've not even collected the chests for it. So 89... At 6 million pull every two days. So we say 3 million a day. 3 million a day, okay. That's a month supply. 
So basically means I don't need to run solo uncommon solo madness for a month. But I pull two two hundred directives a day. That's gonna be six thousand directives after thirty days. How much loot am I gonna have after that? Oof. I I shit. Yeah. That's gonna be massive. But anyway, enough enough said of that one. I mean, how much have I got in the um <coughs> in this now? In all honesty, because obviously, well, I say I've done that. I got four thousand, so yeah, okay. So it's not really pulled a lot, but I've got a, quite a few rares and epics to do. But that—that's the joys of being a free-to-play player. Some days you just don't do it and you save it up. So, but yeah, ultimately, I grade this month, uh, this year, as a D. I will grade it as a D. It's not been the best year, by far. So. But I do think engineering needs to take time out to actually go through the code properly line by line and find these bloody bugs. Because I, I can throw a conspiracy theory here, here that somebody at Scopely is deliberately trying to screw this game over by putting bugs in the game. Or maybe the engineering department are just chucking bugs in for the sheer fun of it just to watch the laugh at us all complaining about them. But I'd, I'd hate to think that they're actually doing that. So, but yeah. Let me know what you, your thoughts are for 2023. And also, are you hoping for a better 2024? You know where to drop them. And that's in the comment section down below. Don't forget to also like this video as well and subscribe to the channel if you have not. Uh, my next live stream will most likely be the two year anniversary on the 6th of January, which is a Saturday. So two years as a content creator, basically going through the two years and just generally, you know, Come and chat with you all. So bring your questions, bring your comments. So join me then on the 6th of January. And uh, until then, I'm Admiral Pegasus. This is the Pegasus Show. Happy New Year. And I hope 2024 is a better year for everyone. Stay safe, live long and prosper. Goodbye.